Hello everyone and welcome to today's Outreach training. I am Fagba Migbi King, the a data scientist at Syndro. And today we'll be looking at the preparation tool palette in Outreach. And for today we'll be looking specifically at the select tool. Okay, so the select tool is actually one of the uh, most important tool in Outreach uh, for me. And um, it has a lot of functionality and um, it can be used for a whole lot of things and it can save you um, a lot uh, when you know how to use this tool very well and um, so it can be used to include exclude and the other columns of field name from um, in, in your workflow so for example you have about 20 data set uh, 20 fields rather uh, 20 fields and then you probably want to use just about five of these fields in your analysis, right? You do not need to include all these fields, right? You can just include or exclude some of this field, right? You can just exclude uh, the, you know, fields you do not want to use in your analysis uh, before you continue in your workflow, which in a way improves uh, the performance and of course the runtime um, in your uh, workflow. And of course it can be used to the other fields and we are going to be seeing in, um, the demo I'm going to do shortly, how uh, reordering your fields can actually be very helpful. Uh, you know, sometimes you probably want to do um, union and you want to do uh, using the union by record position um, configuration. This lecture can actually, you know, help you achieve that when you reorder your columns the way you want, want it. Okay, and of course, it can be used to modify the data type of um, fields and the size and also used to rename a column. So for example, you have probably two fields or two columns that are you know similar in name, right? You can use this select tool to change and rename one, right? So it's very it comes in handy when uh, it comes to that. And of course you can modify the data type of um, your fields. Okay. So for example, whenever you drag a CSV file into Autrix, a comma separated value file, right? Into Autrix, automatically all fields um, are string uh, of the string data type, right? So, and the select tool will help you to, you know, make necessary modifications and adjustments to where you want to change the data type. Now, for example, if you have a string as a data type, let's say, imagine you have in price as a string, right? You can anyway multiply or do some arithmetic operations with that particular field right and why is that so because there's a restriction you cannot do these arithmetic operations on a string type data type right so you can see how this actually help you to achieve a lot of things in your analysis and uh, of course uh, for example if you are doing um, you know, you have uh, some model predictions. You want to do, um, you want to create um, linear models, logistic regression models, and the likes, right? There are some fields that most times you, you don't necessarily have to use all the fields in a particular data set. Why? Because some fields are not um, significant. And if you want to know about significant, you probably have to watch um, other videos that I'm going to be releasing about uh, models and how to create uh, simple linear regression models and the likes. Okay, so. Some models are not, uh, some, some fields are not, you know, significant when you check their, you know, their p values, their um, mean average, uh, mean absolute error, their r squared values, and, and, and so many criteria, right? There are some fields that are not significant to um, your target variable, right? They are just uh, probably predictors, like, like it's been called. They do not significantly affect your target variable and you have to drop them, right? So you can actually use the select tool to, you know, drop these fields, which makes things easier because um, at some point you would not want to uh, have a lot of fields you're not using in your uh, workflow because these fields can actually slow down and decrease the performance of your workflow. Okay, so um, let's dive into the select tool and see how it is being used. And um, before that, I would like to see there are some tools that also have select the select tool functionalities. Like how I've said, uh, the uh, you can include, exclude, reorder, modify data types and the size. You can rename a colon. You can add descriptions and 
other things you can also do. Uh, there are some fields that, uh, there are some tools and tricks that also have these similar functionalities where they can do these things the uh, select tool can do. Uh, we have the append field tool, we have the find nearest tool, and uh, we have the join tool, the join multiple tool, the select in DB tool, which is database tool, right? And also the special match, match tool where you use, uh, use that for your special analysis. Okay, so let's jump into the uh, Altrix tool and uh, software, and then let's see how to use the uh, select tool. Okay, so, so I am here in the Altrix um, software, and then I want to uh, quickly have an overview uh, using the sample superstore data. It's actually a very popular data set. If you uh, need to download it, you can just Google uh, sample superstore data, and then you're going to see it. it's a very popular data set. Okay, so I'm going to bring in uh, the sample superstore data sets here. Uh, that's the last data set I use, so I'm going to click on this. And of course, you can, you know, if you don't know how to use the Impute Data Tool, we can watch my previous tutorials on the Impute Data Tool. And I'm going to bring in my Browse Tool in here, and then I'm going to run. Yeah, okay, so I'm just going to bring this up a little. It's going to bring this up a little, then run this, and then make this up a little so we can see this. You can see that uh, my sample superstore data is a CSV file. And then when I click on the browse, you can see the fields I have. I have 19 fields and I have um, 994 records in total, right? And these are the fields I have in here the uh, category field, city, country, or region, customer name, manufacturer, and a whole lot more. Okay, you can see right I have the ship date, I have the ship mode the state um, subcategory, and then uh, you can see some numerical fields in here, the price, quantity, and sales. But then do not forget, I said, for example, if you bring in a CSV file into Outrex, it automatically changes all the fields to the string data type. And we can confirm that by checking the, uh, clicking on this metadata um, tab. When you click on this, you can see all the type can see we have, uh, if, if you want to know more about the uh, results window, you check out uh, my browse tool tutorial. I extensively talked about this. Okay, so you can see here we have the string data type for all the fields name, all the column you can see, string, right? And of course, uh, you would not want to have that for numeric fields like profit, sales, quantity, and the likes, even your dates, right? Now, uh, there is actually a way to easily transform all of this to have the minimum uh, size and also the corresponding uh, data type using the auto field tool. But for today, we're not going to be looking at the auto field tool. If you want to know more about the auto field tool, you can check my tutorial on that. And uh, so we're going to bring in the select tool, and then you have to click on the preparation tool palette. You can see here, colored in blue, and search for the select tool. Uh, just in case you do not have the select tool in here, right? Um, you do not need to panic. Just click on this um, icon, the add or remove tool icon, and come to your preparation tool palette. After doing that, um, you look at the tools in here, and then you search for your select tool. And if yours is not checked, you look at this checkbox six. If yours is not checked, you just check the checkbox <laughs> and then you click on OK. So we have our select tool in here, the preparation tool palette, and then uh, you can see the select tool here, and then you drag it to your canvas. OK, so this is the configuration uh, window for the select tool. And of course, you know, each tool in Altrix um, have its own uh, uh, configuration tool. OK, and um, so uh, uh, this is the configuration uh, window for uh, the select tool. Okay, so you can see here, so for example, let's come back to this anchor, the output anchor for the um, impute data tool. And then you can see, for example, the country or region. You can see, I do not necessarily need this field. Why? Because everything here is 
United States, right? And of course, I know I'm just uh, analyzing data for the United States. Okay, so it's probably not needed, right? So I can use the select tool to take that off. Okay, and that comes with the excluding uh, characteristics or the functionality of the select tool. Okay, so we can see the country or region. So if I take that off, so just by uh, removing that uh, mark from the checkbox. Okay, so if you run this and then you check from your browse tool, you can see we no longer have the country or the region uh, column in our results. Okay, so that being said, um, we want to change um, this from being a string to a numerical data type. Okay, so if you click on this, you see profits, quantity, and sales being what? Um, a string, right? And we want to change that from being a string to a numeric data type. So we can actually pick any of these, but I would advise you at least pick double because um, of the uh, length. The, the double has a, you know, a large um, size, right? It contains, it can accommodate um, higher binary. So I, I don't want to get into explaining the individual uh, numeric data type. We have the int, the int 64, int 32, and the likes. So I don't want to get into that. Um, I'll probably make a video on that. OK, so we're going to click on the double. And uh, for each of these, we're going to click on double data type. And then you can see automatically we have, um, you know, the size for double, right? And um, OK, so we're just going to run this. Right. And then you can see here that profits, quantity and sales. So if we click on the metadata again and check. You can scroll down. You can see now they have the what type double, right? And this is actually very useful. So, for example, you want to probably uh, multiply your profit colon, your profit field by two. If you do not change that uh, profit field to um, a numeric data type, that would have been impossible, right? Because you can't necessarily multiply a string, right? In uh, Alteryx. Okay, so uh, that being said, uh, let's look at more functionalities of the uh, select tool. Okay, so we can actually rename um, a field, right? We can rename our field in the select tool. So, for example, uh, let's see. Okay, for example, customer name. I want to probably rename to full name, right? I want to change customer name to full name. Right, you can see this is the customer name field, and then you can see the renamed um, field here. I can just come here and say, okay, I want to rename the customer name to what's full name, okay? Full name, okay? And then if you run this, full name, right? Um, to run, you can also use Control R, and if you're on the Mac, you can use uh, Command R, okay? So you can see what we have here. The full name, the customer name has been what's renamed to full name which is nice, right? So um, you can also see that uh, more functionalities of the uh, select tool, you can, uh, you know, add a description, probably this is the full name of, this is the full name of our customers, okay? See? Which is very, very useful. Sometimes probably you want to send this data to people, or your colleague at work, they can easily see or know what you what you mean. They can you can see in the metadata tab, you can see the description of this field, right? You can have description, make it descriptive as much as it can be. Okay, so um, there are more functionalities to the select tool. Uh, like I said, you can reorder your field, uh, your fields. Okay, so for example, you want to let's go back to the data. Uh, let's go back to the data. So for example, you want to compare, uh, let's say, your other dates, your sales and the price, the profit, right? So you want to compare the day you bought something and how much profit you made that same day. So we can also compare like this, sales, okay, uh, let's go. So 
go to the other dates, other dates, which is this particular date here. And then, we'll, so if I ask what's the price and the profit made that day, you have to scroll up to this point and then check. Okay, but that is actually very stressful, right? With the select tool, you can actually improve on that, right? You can just reorder your field name or your column to, you know, what you want to do. For example, want to compare, right? So I'm going to click on the uh, select tool and then click on the other dates, for example. So this is the other dates. And then we reorder it, right? You can just click on this move down, right? And if you're moving it up, you click on this move up arrow. So if you're moving it up, it's like this. I'm moving it down, it's like this, right? You can see we're moving it down to just before sales, okay? Right? And of course, you can right click and drag, right? So if you write, for example, I'm clicking on manufacturer, I want to probably drag it somewhere here after the ship date. I'll just right click and then drag. Right, and then right click and drag. Right, see, it's either you right click or you use this. So, if you have a lot of uh, feed name, you probably don't want to use this because it might take um, a while. So, you might just want to right click, which is faster. Okay, so that being said, this is the other dates, and then we want to also make profits uh, close here. I want to make profits after the sales. Okay, so we're just going to click on this and then profit is here. So let's run this and see what we have right now. Okay, so uh, this is it. So you can see other dates, sales and profit. And you can see it is easier. It is easy to compare now uh, the sales made on a particular date. You, you can check the dates, uh, the particular product was ordered, the sales, how much it was sold for, and then the profits that was made. So you can see this is easier to uh, look at and you know do a quick comparison than when your um, fields are not properly ordered or they are not properly arranged. Okay, so that's one uh, functionality about the uh, select tool. All right, and um, there are also other um, hidden functionalities here or hidden configuration where you can actually use, right? So you can see here, you can deselect all your feeds if you want to deselect all. So for example, you have a whole lot of uh, feeds. So for example, I just want to pick two out of this field. Okay, so I'm just going to click this and say select all. So for example, I just want to see my uh, city and my sales, right? So that means I have to now start clicking this, deselecting, 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 you know, deselecting, selecting and all that. No, to just make my work faster, I just come here and say deselect all, and then click on city and maybe sales, right? And then run my workflow. Right, you see? Cool, everything is fast, right? With the select tool, you don't have to click one by one, do this process in a very tedious way or a time consuming way, right? Again, and I want to have everything back and then i'll say select all if i do this right you can see and then i want to remove my what customer origin which is united states I think um I, I do not need that for this analysis okay so i'm uh, just going to remove this and then i'll click on ctrl r or command r which is the same as you click on on this run uh button okay so that's uh, one of the functionalities and um, configuration for the select tool. And of course, you can sort your fields according to the feed name the and, and the field type. OK, so uh, look at this. So, for example, the original feed name is actually the name. So this name is actually the feed, original feed name, you know, at some point, I renamed some field name, uh, renamed customer name to full name. I probably renamed ship date to shipping date or departure or arrival date. Departure. Let me, okay, let me even put it as departure date. Okay, departure dates. Okay, and then uh, let me see. Okay, that that's fine. So other dates. Okay. Okay, so if I run this, for example, our ship date is now departure date, right? So 
you can see our ship this is our ship date formally right so now if i want to sort um i can either sort on existing fields which is the original field name and i can either sort ascending or descending right um if you want to learn more about sorts um feel free to uh look at the video i uh, recorded on um sort two in Ultrix. okay so if i sort on the original field name um the car is going to happen so let's pick descending for example so if i pick descending and then you can see here it's um, already have that sorted right you can see subcategory is coming first because of course descending and then you can see in here that uh, category is coming last right because it's descending and then you can see customer name is coming here right and ship date is coming here right because i'm using what i'm sorting based on the original fields name so if i click on this if i click on run uh, we're going to see that so you can see category you can see the city you can see um full name right which is actually customer name because it's sorting based on the original field so it's not um you know looking at this current field names okay so um we can also see um shipping yeah so probably when you see the patch date, you probably see oh, this is not started no it is actually using what the original uh, feed name to sort. So if you click here and say sort on what, sort on new feed name, right? For example, let's do ascending. Okay, you can see category, city, country. Now you can see ship date here, but ship date is starts with letter S, right? Why should it be here? Now remember, it is sorting on what the uh, new feed name. So for the new feed name here, we have departure date, right? And then that's why you can see uh ship date here so if we run this i remember we chose ascending and then this is city this is departure date i think category should be somewhere here okay so category city departure dates discount and the likes so you can see how to actually sort um how to actually use select to actually sort your data right um your field name okay so uh you can see you can also sort on the field type, right? So you can see here we have some field type. We have the double, we have uh, the uh, V-string. So let's change one of these double to, let's say, in 64. Uh, let's, let's, yeah, let's change this to, anyway, uh, let's change it to floats, okay? And then let's run this first uh, to be sure that was changed, okay? I think we got some uh, warnings there, okay? Okay, yeah, I lost some information. Okay, that's cool because of the um, numeric data type that was chosen. Okay, so uh, just to show us how to rank using the uh, field type. So you can see here we have the in 64 for profits. We have floats for sales and then we have double for quantity. So we're going to sort this now uh, based on. So we're going to sort this based on uh, field type and see what happened so we're going to do ascending so from smallest to the biggest okay and then you can see here already it's already have this here right and then you can see double coming first so that means double as what the smallest uh, data type if uh, you know classifying uh, numeric uh, data type for classifying data type it means double as what the least data type compared to what we have in view here Okay, so if we run this, you can see that this is, you know, um, having, uh, so click on the data, you can see what we have here, right? It's being sorted, but being sorted on um, the data type. Okay, so there are other functionalities in um, uh, the select tool. You can actually move, uh, you know, your fields by just highlighting them. So for example, if I want to move the, let's see the this here i lighten this you can click on your shift key and then i i lighted all this so i'm going to remove state from it I just want to highlight profits uh to quantity i want them to be my last field so i want them to be somewhere here right i can just by highlighting that i can click on options and then say move them so move highlighted fields to bottom it is not um the move highlighted field to top is greater because you can see they're already at the top already 
So if I click on move to bottom, you can see they moved to bottom already. And then if I click on run, uh, you can see what we have in here, right? You can see what we have in here. So if you scroll, you're going to see the quantity, the sales, and then the profits. Okay, so uh, that being said, uh, there are other options. Uh, other options for the select tool configuration, you can you know add prefix to field name. So for example, um, uh, let's say uh, P profit, and then let's say poster code. You can click on your command or your control key to select multiple fields and then products. So this field starts with P, and if I want to say I just want to add a prefix. Any prefix and say maybe anything, right? I can just add anything and then I'll just come to options and say add prefix to field names. And then you can see the option, right? Uh, you can see only add prefix to highlighted field is being checked. If I uncheck this, it's going to add prefix to all the names. And let's let's try that. So let's uncheck this and say uh, ABC, right? So ABC and then if i click on okay you can see everything was added right you can see abc was added as a prefix to all the field name okay so if we want to change that i can just do a control z right and uh, you know can just come here and say uh, okay control z right so uh let's let's do this again so if i want to just uh change the poster name, the poster code, product name, poster code, and then uh, profits, for example. I can highlight those fields and say um, add prefix to this, right? And you can see, let's say XYZ, right? So XYZ. So this has been checked, and this is what uh, uh, the tool is going to, the configuration is going to set, right? Just to the um, highlighted fields. Okay, so if I click on OK, right? can see XYZ was added to uh, these fields, the highlighted fields, right? You can see, you can see here. Okay, so uh, there are more options, you know, you can um, add suffix, suffix just adds um, to the uh, last part, so to the end, right? Prefix is to the beginning, right? You can also remove uh, prefix, and then you can see here, um, it's suggesting what should be removed. Of course, um, the fields right now have these things in common, right? Um, X in common, X, Y, X, Y, Z, and of course, X, Y, Z, P, because, you know, I chose, intentionally chose um, this field, right? So you can actually just remove uh, maybe X, Y. So if we remove X, Y, so we're left with what Z, P, right? You see, you can do these things uh, without stress in all tricks, okay? So um, you can also um, clear all renames, right? So, uh, or for example, uh, if you don't want to clear all renames, you want to clear just the highlighted renames. So right now, I want to clear this and this. Oh no, this and um, I and this. Just hold your control or your command key, right? I want to clear just that rename, right? And then I come to the option and they say clear highlighted renames. So you can see that the renames of these fields are gone, right? So you can see you can easily do a lot of these things um, using just the select tool, right? A very powerful tool in our tricks. Okay, so um, of course you can revert to your original type and size, and this means uh, you going back to how um, the size and the type of your data was before you brought in the um, select tool. And of course uh, you can just do for the highlighted fields if you want to. Okay, so. And like I mentioned earlier, uh, there are some fields that have similar um, similar functionalities as the select tool. Um, some of them are the join tool. So if you bring in the join tool, for example, uh, you can see the inputs, the field type, the size, the rename, and the description, just like uh, we have for uh, our select tool. Okay, so just like we have for our select tool, and um, so just like we have for select two, okay. So I'm just going to do this. Just like we have for the select two, and um, you can see uh, the select two. You can see. So let's bring in join. Okay, 
the one then attached. So you can see here what we have and what we have here, right? Similar um, configuration. You can see for the special match too. So for the special match, so you just have to, you know, check uh, in here, for example, special data and then the special match. Okay, where are you? Here. Okay, so just going to click on this. So uh, it shows up in my um, uh, menu bar and then uh, so I'm going to click on this. So for example, uh, just going to click on this special. Yeah, and then special match, for example. Okay, so you can see similar configurations, right? As the um, select tool. Okay, so I hope you really learned a lot about the select tool, how to use it, how it can be very useful. Uh, if you are doing, if you want to uh, do data blending, uh, where we want to have, maybe you want to union some data set together, and then you have to make them in a particular order. So you can probably use the um, join by record position uh, configuration in your union tool. Uh, you can also use this select tool to remove um, excess data, um, the data you are not going to be using when you probably want to build uh, models, linear regression models and uh, any type of uh, models, right? The select tool is actually very powerful. Change, uh, you can use it to change your data type to, you know, enable you carry out further analysis, right? Um, so much um, uh, functionalities embedded in this tool. And I hope you enjoyed um, today's training on the select tool. And uh, please um, like this video, share this video, and then um, subscribe to this channel. Um, thank you for listening. Um, see you next time.